Hey guys, first and foremost, thanks for listening. <clears throat> thanks for watching. Um, so we have a really good episode today. And I wanted to prelude this one because it goes really dark. Um, this is the type of situation and scenario that we're, we're here for, right? This is what we're trying to support. This is our path forward away from 22 a day where we can all make a difference as a community. Um, our interview E. I guess you could say. Our guest is Todd Postlewaite, uh, absolutely amazing guy, phenomenal soldier. Uh, I served with him in fifth group. Um, so did Zach, and and his story will change your life. Um, we talk a lot about his childhood, which has a ton of trauma behind it, and then obviously his transition uh, out of the military and some of the stuff he went through in the military. So uh, buckle up. This one's going to be a really, really dark, bumpy ride. Um, if you need to pause, take a break, come back later, no one's going to judge you if you need to reach out. Feel free to reach out to us, disorder.squad.pod at uh, gmail.com, right? Or find us on Discord at Disorder Support. Um, and, you know, we can talk. There's resources. You know, share this with someone you think may be going through something similar. We want to let everyone know you're not alone. This is a community. We've all been here. Um, we, we've all made the sacrifices and we've all felt the way this this Todd has, right? So uh, thank you so much for listening or watching however you're receiving this thank you so much to todd uh for sharing your story and thank you so much for to, to kelsey right for for keeping him here with us and and sharing him with us so thank you guys um we'll talk soon hey guys welcome back to another episode this is episode three uh i'm kyle i'm zach and this is and i'm todd Disorder support. <laughs> Yo, support. not yet, Todd. Sit the fuck down. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, as you may notice, our 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 guest today is Todd Postaway, really good friend of mine and Zach. Served in fifth group with us uh, in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Todd is from Reno, Nevada, and Kansas, so it's not a shock to anyone why he joined the army. Uh, he was a comms guy with us. Um, he has five deployments. Lives in Kentucky now, and he's also a substation communications dude as well as he owns a few properties and some storage units. That's kind of what he does now. What's up, Todd? How are you guys, man? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah? Yeah, I never get to have this <laughs> untethered conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, we might have to tether you and bring you back in. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. So, so, for everyone out there, Todd, Todd was a ton of fun in the military. And Todd was, Todd met his girlfriend at the Electric Cowboy, wife now, mother of his children now. <laughs> but Todd was the first one I can remember to get a house off post. And it was, so I'd go spend the night at Todd's house, right? Let's say we all went there drinking. I'd wake up in his guest room to him throwing a beer at me and just say, I don't even oh, breakfast beer. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's breakfast in a can, bitch. Get up. <laughs> So Todd, Todd was always the life of the party. Um, cool. So thanks for being here, man. Uh, I think you know the drill. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself any further? You got anything else you want to say? I'm thankful all day long that we have the opportunity to to Hell be yeah. real with people. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Me too. So, yeah. all right. Well, I guess then uh, we'll jump right into it. So I guess you want to talk about how your transition was from uh, military to civilian life? Yeah, man. Uh, so, you know, I did eight, eight years and then it came to the point where uh, it was like a turn and burn with the deployments and not having family time, not having a normal life, seeing other people like, oh, you know, I can do better than that. With the better than you mentality, which is not always wrong, but you learn. Um, and so I, I did a contracting gig with uh, Delta Force. Uh, for a year in Afghanistan and Iraq and learned really quick how much life slows down with uh, being a civilian from active duty. And that <clears throat> for me, that was like a mind banging. I'm like, dude, I don't know how to do this. So I did a year uh, halfway through, got, got home for my 10 days and uh, my wife and I were like, you know, we'll, we'll swing to the fences. Maybe we'll have a kid. And so, surprise, uh, Mexico came into factor on that trip, uh, and then, surprise, kid. So, I spent uh, another six months in, 
Iraq, doing the dirty deed while my wife enjoyed uh, pregnancy, uh, mostly by herself. Um, I got back home, lined up the job with TVA to fix telecom, and I thought, you know what, it pays good, good life, I have a good wife, but I have anger issues. And so I just didn't put, I didn't put the can down, man. I picked up the bottle at that point and I would, uh, I'd drink a bottle by myself. Like I wouldn't, it wasn't a social event. So, I don't know. That drove me to the rock bottom. And when people say the rock bottom, I meant the rock bottom. Uh, there was one day I came home from work. We had just bought a second set of storage units and, um, I went over those storage units, I picked something out, and I brought it back to the house, and I gave it to my wife, and I said, well, when White grows up, just be sure he gets this. And then I got in my truck, uh, and by this time it's dark, I got in my truck, and I drove about an hour to Clarksville, uh, where I stopped at a liquor joint, uh, picked me up another bottle, pulled off the side of I-24, did my my dirty, dirty last text, hoping somebody would uh, guide me through the anger, through the drunkenness, through the I'm miserable with my family, I hate my job uh, mentality. And then uh, sucked that bottle down. I pulled out the pistol from my center console. As soon as I saw police lights, dude, I I tucked it under my chin thinking like, this is going to be the answer. I don't have to deal with constant stress, anger, um, it wasn't like money was a factor because it by far was not. It wasn't like knowledge wasn't a factor. It was by far not. Um, and I pulled the trigger and I shot myself through the, through the neck and uh, crushed half of my skull basically with that round. It was life flighted to Vanderbilt down in uh, Nashville. And uh, I, sometimes I love dragging my wife into this because for like, I was there for six weeks uh, and for the first three weeks, I couldn't tell you anything. I could just, I have videos of myself being interviewed by my son when I couldn't talk, couldn't move. I, I couldn't do anything by myself. <clears throat> and so it was, that was, it was a, a, at that point that, um, A, my wife didn't leave me, which thank God for that all day long. I would have ditched me, uh, <laughs> But at about week five, I still only had half of a skull and half of a head of hair. Uh, and so you know, they were like, yo, bro, here's the options. This guy's going to be like half paraplegic. Uh, we'll call it challenged. Challenged is a nice way of saying retarded. Uh, and he's going to be useless. And so they, they had planned to take me to like a, a rebuilding committee. <clears throat> and my wife ran around chasing all that stuff by myself, by herself while I was just hanging out with a helmet at the hospital. Um, speed the time up, dude. And I snap back to it. I, I can walk, talk, understand i can bring up memories i can <clears throat> you wouldn't known if you were just talking to me and didn't see me and then i came home <clears throat> and i was uh i i didn't go back to work because obviously you're not going to go work on power lines or in substations and have half the head <clears throat> so for six months i spent time alone at the house or with a compadre, a friend, a family member holding the hand and making sure that I'm not, you know, still a loose cannon. But at that point, I'm like, how do I pull the trigger wrong? <laughs> that's that's what on, was man. going through your head. <laughs> yeah, how do I, how, like, it just wasn't meant to be. It's got to be a bigger factor if the doctors are saying I'm supposed to be, like, paraplegic or, you know, <clears throat> basically retarded. Yeah, and here you are talking about this. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank God. Um, and so part of that like process was me tipping the bottle back still. 
with half a head. And I was wrong about six ways from Sunday, but it was used as a lesson to learn. To learn that, A, I didn't have the friendship that I wished I had or would have had if we were stuck in Syria or Lebanon or Afghanistan or Iraq. And it wasn't like I could reach out. <clears throat> and so I went back to work for TVA and realized, like, I don't need the money. I'd rather be happy. So I quit with TVA. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm good. Like, I have other things to make me happy. And it wasn't all about the dollar bills. And so <clears throat> part of that process was me and my wife literally rebuilding our marriage. Because she stuck that out. I'm still a, an angry dude that's picking up the bottles and sticking to myself and not being a good husband, let alone a good dad. But <clears throat> we rebuilt our marriage off of two accounts. One was... Um, short-term memory issues. It's all good. One was this, <clears throat> one was this lady that uh, was an older sister of a guy I went to high school with. And she does marriage counseling. And we're like, yo, we need help. And that was part of us rebuilding our marriage. And then we were going through a second course at the same time, covering basically the same concepts of like, Rebuilding your marriage, and if you're married, then it ain't easy. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that can get on that. <clears throat> Excuse me, Todd. What do you What do you think it was though that like, um, like and that pushed you to that point? Was it like relationships with people that you felt like you disbanded from, and so like you felt like you were just alone at that time, like isolated for that very when instant? I the yeah. It was anger. It was just uh, one of the hidden things. Yeah, you can look at a dude and be like, dude, he smiles. He's always funny. He's always, you know, productive or he's the first one to help or whatever. But I was the last one to be like, I'm wrecked, you know. I, I remember you, in the army, you busted your ass all the time. Like you ranked up fast. You were that, you know, that star soldier, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, we, we rebuilt our marriage. We started doing, we started hosting marriage retreats for couples where you isolate from the kids, from your job, from school, from, it doesn't matter. You just literally work on your marriage, which we learned really quick, but it's focusing on yourself first. Like my priorities went from like, my marriage, my son, then me to like <clears throat> God, religion. And, you know, we can go deep into that, but God, religion, me, my wife, then my son. And some people, you know, I, I was the first one to always judge people like, what do you mean your family's not first? But now I realize like, hey, dude, I've sucked lead and came out. Yeah. And for me, even have a conversation with you guys and still be fruitful and productive. I'm thankful for. I mean, there's there's so many times in my life. I, we, so I'm going to back up just a little bit, right? So we, the, the guest that we had on last week, we were realizing that there's a commonality between most veterans, right? Most of us have a really shitty childhood, like really fucking bad. Our parents suck ass at you. Our childhood is really fucking bad. Most of us constantly in fights or arrested, right? Or just dumb, poor, and life sucks, right? Uh, and that breeds a certain kind of person, you know what I mean? And so when I look back at my, at my life, like, and I look back and think, where are my happy moments from this point in my life behind me, right? And th the shitty thing really is, is none of them are from my childhood. And a lot of them, you know, involve you, man. A lot of them involve you, right? I mean, there was that time I was moving across the country after I moved back to Florida, went back, and I moved to Colorado. And halfway 
halfway there, I was like, bro, I'm going to just come by your house for a few days. And you're like, dude, fucking do it. And you took me out on your boat. You let me stay at your house. You know what I mean? I look back in, in some of my best times were in Nashville, in the army with you and the rest of the boys. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I still got that picture on my Facebook profile but with the, the, I got my pants halfway pulled down with the, the ass statue or whatever in Nashville. Uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, and so like, had it had it worked out the way you planned it, it really would have fucked a lot of us up. You know what I mean? It it really would have. So, just at least from me, I'm I'm glad it didn't. Um, and it's it's a fucking miracle it didn't, right? How many people get to say that you know, I put a gun under my chin, I fucking aimed it up in my skull, and I pulled the trigger, and I'm still here talking to you today. No doubt. That's a fucking miracle. And I'll, I'll say I love I love the priority story, right? Because obviously after I went through my own shit and, and came out on the other side, uh, my wife and I did the same thing, right? This couples therapy thing. And one of the things we learned was, was I mean, for us, we're not religious, so God's not at number one, which is fine. You know, no judgment on my end. Hey, peace, Sarah. Yeah. But, but it's the same pattern flow you followed, right? Number one is you. Number one for me is me. It has to be me. It cannot be my wife. It cannot be my kids. Number two has to be my wife. It cannot be my kids. Number three is my kids and my family as a whole, right? And people don't get that. You know, and I, I was the same way as you. What the fuck you mean your family's not number one? Are you kidding me? You're not number one. Your family's number one. Yeah. You know? And it's this, it's this selfish mindset or, or the, the idea that you might be selfish, right? If you're putting yourself first. Um, and I don't know if that stems from childhood or from shitty circumstances or from the army or just the thought of being a, what a true man is, right? Always puts your family first, but you know, that's, that's, if there's any takeaway from this conversation to anyone out there, it's, it's, you're fucking number one. You are number one. <laughs> Put yourself well, yeah, first. Let me, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to have to drag you into, into childhood on that. Like I'm, I don't have a choice, but, uh, <laughs> Born in Reno, Nevada, right? And uh, already shitty start. Right. Good. I know. So, there we go. There's a, a dirtier name for that. It yeah. should like below Sparks or something like that. But um, at age three, I was picked up at the bar because my biological dad was like, "Hey, dude, I'm throwing one back." So me and my two biological brothers, yeah, six. <clears throat> Hang on. Me and my two biological brothers, like yo, we're going to hustle this little wishing well. So we're digging <laughs> coins out of there. Trying to be rich, I guess. Yeah, always. And so then we went to foster care because he got arrested. Uh, you name it, it's 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 wrong on his part. I was great. Uh, <laughs> so we went to foster care to separate homes. And I learned real quick that foster care is not what they make it out to be. Like <clears throat> this uh, older lady would she was my first one that I remember would say that I said a bad word or I said a cuss word and she'd take me into the bathroom and she'd fill the sink up with water. And then it was like, a what was the nice term forced baptism. Oh Jesus. When you're like three, four years old, she just shove your head under water, bring your head back up. And if you can't say what you did wrong, then your head's going back under water. And I'm like, man, this is messed up. And so, we all went to about three homes before we were brought back together as brothers. And we're like, yo dude, and like, Hey, that's my brother. Dude knows what I'm feeling or something. Something sneaky. Uh, and then we were all brought into the same foster home of this, uh, couple that had six other kids at a time. Wow. So there's nine of us in, in one house in Fallon, Nevada. And, uh, then they're like, hey, you know what? In order to keep you guys as a family, like, we'll have to adopt you. And we're like, uh, no, nah, we're good. Like, I don't know about that. And they're like, well, what do you want? What What's it going to take? And I'm like, well, I don't like my first name. Like, I don't like Todd. <laughs> my middle name's trash, too. I want to change that if I'm going to change my last name. And they're like, uh. Oh. Huh? What was the middle name? Robert. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I'm a Robert. Yeah. I know, I know. It's tough, tough times, dude. And I'm like, put Bob in there. <laughs> and so, anyways, uh, you know, we're, we're still the kids fighting in school, just 
showing our aggression in a different manner. And one of the first ones to fight in class, and it wasn't like it should have been fixed a long time ago, but it, yeah. you know, is what it is. And uh, so we finally get adopted, and then it becomes like a what do you call it? Like a a handy tribe where they just force you to get a handy. Yeah. This is new on like, me. Dirty sexuality. Yeah. Dirty sexuality. First one, Rick was always like, Hey, you're up kind of late. You want to go like play on the computer. And at the time computers were like dial up, yeah. but it was still porn existed. And so you sit there and watch porn and he's like, Hey, rub it on you. And you're like, dude, this isn't right. But then again, you're, I think I was in third grade. It was the first one that I remember. I'm like, why? Like, nobody's here to tell me, no, it, it's wrong. No, like, it shouldn't happen like this. And then it was, like, progressive all the way up into, like, mid-high school where you're like, dude, this is wrong. Yeah. But then again, they're controlling your housing. They're controlling your food. They're your controlling life. your freedom, your life. Yeah. yeah man and so my junior yeah my junior year in high school man we got into it over something stupid and I was like well screw it I'll move out and they're like huh and I had started this lawn business and I was making good money and I had good friends and so I literally moved up two blocks this is the middle of nowhere Kansas two blocks <laughs> I took my mower my truck the weed eater, leaf blower, the trailer. I'm like, dude, I, this business ain't stopping. This house going to roll. <laughs> but it makes me some money. Make it my life. It's going to be no big deal. <clears throat> so that lasted about like four weeks where, where I did that. And there was never any cops involved. It was when school started back up that cops got involved. They showed up to school and were like, hey, you have to move back home. Like by state law, blah, blah, blah. So I just had to move back home and still was like, got wrecked like nine times. Imagine. It's like, and I'm not even out of high school. Did you, did you try to tell the cops what's going on at home? You know what? No. And I messed that up. Well, no. Because. That's not on you. You know, no, you, you well, should never have to tell anybody that because it should never fucking happen. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent But again, that was, you know, 20, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah, society was different. Which yeah. I'm not saying it was right or wrong, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, it, it, it's a wreckage. And my wife has only met them one time. After she pushed the pushed the envelope, uh, right after we got married. <laughs> You know, two months, two month dating spiel, and then we get married, and uh, <clears throat> they're mad. We're driving through Kansas. We're like, "Hey, we'll stop and get dinner in Manhattan, which is right outside Kansas State." And she learned really quickly why I said no. I don't want to go right. visit these adoptive parents, but yeah. So I mean just drugs involved or whatever every now and then back then and I'm like it's thankful yeah. yeah so uh, how are your brothers doing <clears throat> oh man Kenneth he's down in Oklahoma doing HVAC and he's he's enjoying it he's he's truly come a long way and his story's not mine but he's He's a phenomenal dude that will pick up the call, pick up the phone when I call, and I'll do the same for him. But yeah, Tommy, he's some, he's somewhere. He moved down to Nashville, and then he uh, is a ghost now. So yeah, that's tough, man. And you know, it's it's if you if you didn't go through what you went through. Do you think you would have gotten the same mental help to deal with all this shit from your childhood? You know, I did do that, actually. You like, did? It wasn't... Yeah, I went to psych wards like three times when I was growing up. When it was like weeks on end of like, hey, your door's locked. Hey, 
you know. How was, how was that, Todd? That, that experience of going. You know what, man? I for one, I shouldn't have been going. Like, it's not their job to you know do the assessment on me. I do think that like some of the funding is silly, but at the same time, the aspect of what they were doing and how they ran lockdowns or kids out of control or whatever, I, I, I think it would be fruitful, but it would have to change with like, it would have to change their menu, their, their schedule to really like hit home for you to open your mouth about like what's really wrecked at home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was, I, I, so I ended up in a group home once the rest of the time, just straight jail. They just took me to jail. And the last time I can remember I got arrested, ah, oh God, it was just before sixth grade. And it's because huh? I, I went to sleep or I went to sleep. I went in my room and I had a fucking, my baseball bat under my bed. And I knew, I knew that if my mom came in my room, I was going to donk her over the head as hard as I could. Because it was, I really thought I was going to fucking die. You know what I mean? Like, I really thought shit yeah. was that bad. I mean, it was that bad. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm a fucking fifth grader. <laughs> it was that bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so she Pretty comes, hard, she, she comes, I don't even know what happened. Honestly, I don't even know what led up to it. And she comes in the room, rips off the blankets like she's about to start, you know, wailing on me again for whatever. I don't even know what the reason is. You know what I mean? She sees the bat, runs downstairs, calls the cops. And this is probably the seventh or eighth time. By fifth grade, I've been arrested, taken to jail. And so I get arrested again. And uh, I remember, you know, hand, hand to feet shackle, walking into the courtroom with all the other kids tied to each other. And I told the judge, I said, I said, I know what you think. I know you think I'm a troubled kid. And obviously, I didn't say it this well back then. I said, I know you think I'm a troubled kid. I know you think my mom's some kind of fucking saint. I said... But you either send me to live with my dad or you send me to live on the street or back to the group home because I'm not going back home with my mom. I'm just not doing it. And uh, and he did. He did. Which is, which is crazy because all those years I was arrested, everyone, oh, he's just a trouble kid. He's just a trouble kid. And same as you, I never mentioned a word, you know. I never, she's, you know, she's doing this, she's doing that. It was always just like, I was mad. I was angry. I, you don't know how to express that as a little kid, you know what I mean? You're just fucking yelling yeah. at people when they're arresting you. They're, they're, they're overpowering you because they're adults. And you're just yelling and screaming and that you're just this wild, rambunctious kid that can't be controlled, which is total bullshit. You know? I'd like yeah. to think the world's different today. I really would. I don't know. My kids will never find out. That's the one promise I made. My kids will never find out. No doubt. Um, yeah, that shit's pretty shitty, dude. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry we have to have this conversation. <laughs> I really No, am. man. I, I'm glad I can open the doors and be comfortable with like sharing it because, you. I mean... You can talk about football with somebody who doesn't watch football, and they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. Quarterback." Right, right, right. <laughs> but as soon as you're like, "Dude, I got a llama," and they're like, "Tell me more. What's around its waist?" Like, Dude, come on. You ever a spitting contest with your llamas? <laughs> you, you hit a spot, and somebody's like, "Oh, I can open up. I, I do have similar, similar yeah. experience." Yeah. So, all right, so. I'm going to try to stay on the military topic, or at least guide us back there, if that's cool with you. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, you were tied up from your kid. Yeah, oh, yeah. You had their show? I guess it depends on how <laughs> fucked up your mind is. <laughs> uh, take it where you want it. Um, <clears throat> all right, so after you got out, clearly things went to shit. I don't think they went to shit right away, at least not physically, outwardly, right? Because I knew you well after you got out, right? Uh, yeah. Clearly, I got out first, but but you know, for a while, things were all right. So where I guess there was no outward inflection point, right? Because you you just went off and did this thing on your own, right? But if if you if you got out today, knowing what you know now, right? Well, what would you do? Like, how would you prevent you from you from being in that truck? I would have gone to church with a different attitude, honestly. Gone to church with a different attitude? I mean, we didn't even go to church, but I, I say that because with our situations, you're surrounded by people that, like, A, won't get your mentality. B, is the first one to be like, oh, I can't believe you'd say that. And you're like, dude, that's my set of humor. But 
when you have like a clear conscience and that's key a clear conscience and you're asking actually asking for help but you're not surrounded by people who would understand it and then you're like dude i'll i'll pray to god and whether or not you believe in god i do so i'll i'll submit a prayer and it's unbiased it's it's not setting my own goals it's picking up links along the way to help me make that decision so that I am happier and the anger is gone. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that's from going through counseling and counseling all, all the time growing up counseling after the shooting that I was told I needed to do. It's the same thing of everybody focused on where was the past and where are you now when it should be like, where are you now? Where do you look to? Yeah. You'll drag that stuff from the past in, mm-hmm. in a positive manner rather than a negative manner. Like, dang them, and I shouldn't, should recognize that, or now I know this. I think it's working on cars. And there's, there's, but there's so much truth to that, right? You can, you're always going to drag the past with you. There's no getting around. Yeah. There's, no matter yeah. how much you, you think you can put it away, you can't put it away. It's coming, right? Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, no, I know. I'm not. I don't know if we said this on air or before we were recording, but yeah, for for everyone's record, I'm I'm not religious, but that doesn't mean I I believe in what what God means to people. You know what I mean? I, I believe in that shit. Like, you you have to have, and I think the the bigger ticket item here is you have to have something you believe in, right? That gives you hope and faith. Yeah. Right. Some something that that guides you to the future and to be a great fucking person. Right to care about about other people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and if that's God for you, Amen. You know I love it. I do. All right. Oh, so honestly, I forgot. I didn't even look at the clock when we started. I know I said I'd cut you off at an hour, but I have no nah, idea dude, where keep we're rolling. at. For sure. I'm enjoying this. Keep it rolling. <clears throat> I keep mute myself every time I cough. I'm sick. All right, so uh, all right, so this is the third thing I sent you, right? What what are some challenges that you still face today, right? Given all you've been through, right? The, and how do you deal with them? And this can be as openly as as PTSD from the military, from from your own experience, from your own shooting, right? It could be something as small as that. Like I know I have a ton of anger issues. I still have to where I I snap on a fucking dime. And my wife is like, you scare the shit out of me. And I'm like, I know I'm sorry. When I calm down, I'm like, I know I'm sorry. I don't want to be that guy. You know what I mean? So it could be anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, it was rebuilding family. No doubt. Like, I, I am eager to come home. I'm eager to spend time with my wife who has been through the tough stuff, the great stuff, all of it with me. Uh, why who keeps me, like with an open mind rather than an isolated mind of like, this is how it has to go. And he's like, Hey dad, actually I'm like, man, he's half right, but we'll make him full. Right. (laughs) So, I mean, one's prayer and that's honest, open concept. Two is my family. Cause I was always looking for the second dude. That's going to like, you know, rub my shoulders when they hurt, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, (laughs) <laughs> I, I I'm still waiting on that one. Can't find that, can you? You wait for a while, buddy. You can wait for a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, a dollar doesn't spend like it used to. Um, so that that was a factor, and then I guess it's open communication would be it. Do you still struggle with open communication? No, I don't hardly struggle at all i mean it's been a heck of a roller coaster but for me anger like even a grunt has only come back like twice hell yeah but it's still sustainable because that open line of communication that being able to talk to my wife and her understand and we both adjust so that it's not wreckable I guess. Yeah. Is there anything that you do, Todd, to like, like, you know, get rid of that anger? Like anything that you could recommend to somebody who's like super angry? 
Are you, are you talking to me? He's talking about, about, about himself. Being angry? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, tell, I'm telling you that, like... One of the things would be coping, I guess. Find that one one thing that is you can do anywhere so that you can you can calm down, you can talk yourself out of it. And I mean that's a I guess common concept, but actually having a wife that supports you and then a different set of friends that, you know, may not leave the state but less likely join the army like <laughs> that's a challenge in itself yeah. but yeah hard to find around here it's it's something i i do quite often in fact my <laughs> wife just pointed out to me i was doing it the other day when we were driving down the road i was I, I was irritable i could feel it you know what i mean like it didn't matter i was about to snap and i didn't know at what it's just whatever came next that pissed me off was gonna get it this was like a week ago and i just i i started just doing this my breathing exercise you know just very very and, and not not anything like hypnotic not anything like meditative just very very deep and slow breaths in for you know a good couple seconds breaths out for a good couple seconds quiet slow to myself and it really does work it takes it doesn't take one breath it doesn't take two breaths it takes four five you know 30 seconds to a minute a minute and a half but it really does help it really does take you your 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 irritation level i'll say and just bring it on down right and i didn't snap anyway that day so it was a good day <laughs> yeah man there was actually a program that i went to uh in january and it was two weeks long and it's self-isolation really like you don't bring your family with you uh you you get thrown into a classroom with uh for me it was uh soft personnel uh, and they, they drag you through many different concepts to deal with negativity or deal with, uh, judgmental attitude towards other people or hating to be with other people. And I'm literally looking through my text messages cause again, memory's terrible, but it was, you fill out an application of my wife. My wife played a role in this. Uh, fill out an application, uh, justify that you're a veteran and that you want to better yourself and isolate yourself to focus on bettering yourself. But these aren't typical like psychiatrists or doctors. They're phenomenal at the here and now and future, not the past and now. Let me. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. Drag this up. And, yeah, and let's hear this. For for the for everyone out there that does listen to this, soft is special operations, folks. Right? Like it's like. Right. That's what you said. Soft. Bunch of soft people. Well, they broke into two classrooms, so it was 24 total veterans, whether it's Army, Navy, Marines. Uh, Space Force still doesn't count. Um, <laughs> uh, we're not sticking the Army with the with the Navy, so. Yeah, no. If there's uh, lines, there's clear lines here. Well, they they broke everybody up from like your regular military personnel and then your special operations guys. So you pair up with like similar, guys. similar experience, like minded, right? Right. Yeah. Are you trying to find the name of the place or the program? Yeah, it's gonna. I know it was in January. You know. Yeah, they, I mean, they drug us, they, they sent us out as part of like one of the classes with challenges, like go do something you don't want to do. And I'm like, dude, I'm about to rob a bank. And they're like, hey, don't rob the bank. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm not robbing the bank. Be a bad and idea. then you come back in, you come back in and you say, hey, these are the actual principles that we talked about in class that I actually applied it and made an effect on me not getting mad or me doing something that is usually discomforting to me. And do it, it's phenomenal. Two fourteen. 
Was it a type of therapy? Was there like a name for the type of therapy it was? Don't make me quote on any of that. It wasn't a therapy. So they had team events, individual events. You stayed at a hotel that was walking distance within the thing. Uh, there was challenges and that was constant challenges where you document and make it personal to yourself rather than, you know, whipping out a, a book and be like chapter four, verse five. This is right. awesome. Like you're like, Hey, actually I do get that. You're like hands on. Yes. hundred percent hands on. And it, it was, it was good, man. You might, you know, you might just go over that bridge that they ran into and uh, figure out what makes you happy about that. In Maryland? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, the conspiracy theory is already out. Uh, dude. I'm lost on this. It's called movie. Home Base. Home Base. I've actually heard of Home Base. Dude, yeah. nobody ever said anything about that. And it was like a stumbling from the whole Nashville incident. I went to go see a doctor a year, like a year after it happened. And he's like, hey, dude, have you heard of this? I'm like, no. My wife's sitting there with me. And he's like, I used to work there. And I love that concept. He's like, but I do love Nashville, too. And I'm like, oh, like, so you're a doctor down here now. Right. I'm like, all right. The VA pay for that? Yes. It's 100% no cost. They give you per diem for the meals that they don't provide. Yeah, no, it's good. Nice. Flights, whole thing. Definitely a great fucking resource. Yeah. You said nine days? Nine days? No, it was two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay, okay. Two weeks. So one full weekend where we ended up going out to like a... It was like a petting zoo. And you rode horses. And I was the only dude that picked a mean goat to walk him out in the field on a leash. And was that you were say animal? he wasn't that mean. Okay. He knew. He knew, he knew um, who the yeah. alpha male was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I heard that horses are very therapeutic. I heard that a lot of those... Um, I've heard of a few of these places that, that do, like, this intensive, like you know, live in the therapy, kind of, you know, do the challenges, be with a group of like-minded people, go through the same shit, similar shit. Um, yeah. I've heard they all use horses at some point. <laughs> like, legit. <laughs> Dude, we did for you, man. Horse, horse-drawn carriage? Dude, we, we did that. <laughs> and I'm like, Dude, it's horse-drawn carriage. And I was like, all right, man, they actually put some effort into this. Like, this is legit. <laughs> This is my not my first time around horses or messing with horses and and then we did like uh, a course where you have to manipulate the horse to go between or over pipes or whatever and people there were awesome. Cool, cool. That sounds very cool. I think a great fucking resource. I, I personally, I'd love to go do something like that. Do it. Yeah. Home home Unless base. Home base. Two words. Home base. Nice. All right, cool, cool. So, since you've been out, right, we talked about a lot of negative shit you went through. Um, what's, I guess, what's some, some strengths the military has given you that, that help you get through your day-to-day or just be a, the, the person you want to be? You know what I mean? Even if it's a career or money, doesn't matter. Family. <laughs> so, I don't... I wake up at 5.30 a.m., no no alarm. Like, I beat my alarm clock up. Excuse me. It was like 5.05, but I beat my alarm up, and I shut my alarm off before it. it's going off. Like, the style of life, you drag it in. Like, if you aren't beating the sun up, are you really going to start your day the right way? Is that Grant so, Cardone? <laughs> Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> this dude's obsessed. An extra life. Yeah, ten x ten x your mornings, Todd. Ten x your mornings. <laughs> <laughs> Just had a ten x breakfast, guys. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Comfort factor. 
so most people would be like, yo, I got out of the military and I couldn't find a good job or um, everything didn't just fall into place like it did with so-and-so. And 100%, I think that that's attitude. Yeah. Like, you can know not a thing, but if you can go in there and impress the interviewer or show that you're willing to learn and be the guy to go to when things don't go right, by all means, be able to step out of the comfort zone to to actually help other people. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> we're just chasing a dollar bill and my attitude is 100% change of that because the dollar bill doesn't do nothing for your happiness. Whereas showing up and impressing somebody and building a relationship based on your attitude yep. is a bigger win. Now there's there's the, the financial aspect of life, right? Like I want to make as much fucking money as humanly possible. Yeah. But it says very clearly on my resume, whenever I send it out to new companies, right? It says very clearly, I derive my happiness from two things, my family and public recognition of the shit that I do, right? Because I, I want everyone to know, like, I take pride in what what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's where I'm going to get happiness, and that's why I'm going to perform for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then pay me really well, because I, <laughs> I want the money, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it's, it's uh, quick, quick pro quo on that. Hey, you're right. <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> Nice. All right. So I think self recognition though is it's a huge thing though. Self recognition is definitely a huge thing. And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm bad at that. You know, I'm always like I'm never doing good enough. Nothing's ever enough in my career in my life. Like I'm not strong enough. I'm yep. not fast enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not making enough money. You know what I mean? I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I I don't feel like everything anything is ever enough for me. So I. Here's another challenge that came up after the whole whole gunning is uh, this fancy lady named Diane Oakley rolled into my life. And I had known her. Like, I physically met her at one of the schools that Kelsey taught at. And then I, I was like, man, she's like six foot six. She played college basketball. And then she didn't oh, continue tall. chasing basketball. And she became a teacher. And one of the things that she does is consistently help people, whether that is donating clothes or we have two times a year, we go down to Nashville with donated items, whether that's soap, socks, shirt, shoes, uh, snacks, you name it. And we help with the people who are going through a rough time. Um, we st- we started a nonprofit with her. And so we just didn't want to be taxed on it, but we wanted to be able to like financially help, whether that's buying things or whether that's paying for something that somebody needs. And for a lot of people that'd be like a pat on the back for them. For me, it's like capability, knowledge, financially, like, <clears throat> We, we, we run with it and help as long as we know that the money's going to the correct aspect. So. Nice. I love it. Yeah. I do. I don't, you know, I don't think there's enough people out there that give a shit about other people. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. I, I really don't. I, out, outside of, outside of, I'll say your tribe, you know what I mean? Like, I've got my close friends that I'd do anything for. Like, either one of you guys called me up at any point in time, I'd do, I'd do it. You know, you call me up, you said, hey, look, I'm really in a bad fucking spot. I need this. I'd do it. You have? Outside of my, fa- outside of my family, you know? But then you guys, my family, that's my tribe. All right? Yeah. Outside of that, and people, everyone has their own, you know what I mean? Outside of that, nobody, it seems like, gives a shit about anybody else anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, you flick somebody off because they cut you off going down a one lane road. They whiz around you super fast. And you're like, what a fucking idiot. What an ass. I mean, that guy could be racing his choking kid who's laying down in the back seat of his car to the hospital. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like, and maybe he's not. Most likely he's not. But but the, the point still stands that you have no idea what the fuck everyone's going through. And nor you can choke his kid. <laughs> you know, I said, I said in the first episode we did. 
I sat, we went through Disney. We went to Disney, and this rent a cop that was like guarding the, the guard gate. We were pushing a stroller with my nephews in it, and the bottom of the stroller completely empty, not a bag, nothing. And he's like, "All right, anything else I need in the stroller I need to worry about?" And I was like, "Besides the AK and the bomb, we're good." And I thought it was funny. Surrounded by cops, bro. At Disney World in Florida. Surrounded by cops so fast. And it's like, people just don't get the humor. You know what I mean? They just don't get it. So, for the record, we're not choking children. No one's choking nope. a child. <laughs> it's, it's... No <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, all right. So, so let's, I guess I sent you a scenario earlier. I know you had time to think about it. You're going to tell him not to choke his kid. But let's say Soldier Joe comes up to you today he says hey man I, I got a year before i get out right what's some shit i can do so when i get out i feel i'm, I'm successful not just physically but but mentally as well i think that honestly the, the toughest part of anybody is like self-assurance some people get that from other people but if you're going to literally transition out of active duty, you need to have a plan. And part of that plan is meeting with people. And yeah, a lot of people are like, dude, I don't want to meet with a bunch of people and be told what's right and what's wrong. That's not what you're meeting for. You're meeting for making an image of who you are. And with that image will open additional doors because you might talk to Joe at the gas station who's filling up the tank and you're like, dude, I'm going to, I want to drive a fuel tanker truck. How do I become an 18? I'm like, Oh, well, the military. Yeah. But Joe might know Jeff who owns the entire company and Jeff might bring up stuff that you weren't aware of or you, you would love to do. And so it's not always about the first person or the, Hey, dude, I'm going to talk to Eastwood Connected. about filming. You guys right. remember Eastwood in California? Yeah. <laughs> when they were filming that video and we are trying to do the special ops stuff and they were just clowning were they, everything. Were they filming something? Yes, the movie. I don't remember the filming. 13 I remember, days. I remember being there. It I was one of the big movies. I don't yeah. remember filming the filming. Our the... the Green Berets are over like, dude, let's, can we get on the shooting scene? They're like, dude, no. You're like, how are you going to tell an actual Green Beret? Right. You can't teach the actors how to do it right. Right. I, dude, I don't, are, you're talking about when we were in El Centro, right? Yes. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, they how were the shooting fuck did I was like that across my mind? from where we were running some of our, our oh, tasks. Shit. Yeah, and I saw it and I'm like, holy, what a power, like. We're not the only ones training here. I'm like, no, dude, that's the actual movie. And it's the it's the uh, building top shootout that they were doing. Okay. Literally at that time. And I'm like. 13 days? You guys not over there just running that joint. They're like, no, no. they Super narrow mind. Eastwood is not nice to public. <laughs> Shut down half of these. So that he and his crew can go in there. And he doesn't have anybody bothering him. And like, literally didn't like different mindset than you'd ever think i don't know i remember being there i don't remember a fucking movie being shot dude it wasn't about you <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> i wouldn't be sitting here if it was <laughs> <laughs> all right so so networking right you know don't be afraid to talk to people talk to everyone and anyone right and also, I think there's like a subliminal message there that you didn't mention, right? You said talk to the gas station attendant, right? And that's that's don't classify anyone as good or bad, better or worse than someone else, right? Right, yeah. Just love don't everybody, just talk to everybody. I love it. I love it. That's that's honestly, I wouldn't say it's the most financially sound advice we've gotten, but it's the best advice we've gotten for sure, right? Because most people, they, they say, you know, have a, have a financial plan in place. And I love that idea, right? Something I didn't do. I went fucking broke and homeless after I got out for a while. You know, I had to sell everything I owned. Um, but, but, so that's definitely important, right? But what got me out of that was talking to people, making relationships, right? Building a life and a network of folks. Um, 
So I love that. That's that's advice that people think that that successful people do. They just don't share it. People don't do it, you know. Yeah, so no doubt. Great. All right, Zach, you got anything else for Todd? Um, I think the only thing I don't think I wanted to touch on was um, if if there's something out there like you could tell somebody like that you know is like really needs you know mental mental health you know they have severe anger uh ptsd i don't know what you were diagnosed with uh, i'm guessing ptsd was probably one of the things that you're di- probably severe right because the va labels everyone severe sure. been, you know? yeah um so if you could tell anybody out there that's really angry has all these emotional problems going on inside themselves something that they could do that they could take away from this to really help them, you know, to make better choices, you know, cause we all been there. Like we all sort of try to commit suicide at one point. Right. Um, Todd, luckily you're still alive, you know, thank God. Um, but yeah, if there's something that you could, you know, tell everybody the one thing that they could do that anybody can do. Anybody can do. Build a true support team. Okay. And that's, I mean, hopefully that's your spouse. Yeah. Hopefully that's your spouse. Or other veterans, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, you you can't, you can't assume that. So So you, you can't assume that, like, everybody's going to have an answer for you. But what you can take into thought is maybe they're going to lead you somewhere else. They're going to lead you down. They're going to introduce you to somebody who does have a better aspect than something that you've heard or something that you've tried to do or changing scenarios so that that anger isn't destructive. It's productive. And that's kind of like how I was able to, push all the way through everything was that my anger was turned to work and it was a neglect to family. So your bank shows it, but your family doesn't. And so finding that, that balance and not being angry, you, you have to talk to somebody who's been through something similar and can, can be like, yo, this is how I did it. I think I like that. I think home base is really fucking good, dude. Yeah. Yes, I, I can't <laughs> like the, the doctors like there are veterans. Some of the counselors are veterans that have actually been, you know, drugged through the Afghanistan initial push, or you name it, man. It it's eye opening. And then there's secondary courses too that you can get into if that's something that you choose to do. So you go through scheduling and do the same thing and you now they're bag full of tools over there yeah. in a not sexual way all right on that note well, i appreciate it brother. <laughs> thanks thanks for being on <laughs> um yeah yeah thank you cool seriously yeah, thank you guys you did a good thing i appreciate it